Olivia and Mia Flores are married to the highest level traffickers ever to become informants against the Mexican cartel. Their husbands worked with and then brought down El Chapo along with dozens of other high level narcos. They had everything money could buy, luxury cars, huge houses, and expensive jewelry, but they chose to give it all up when they cooperated with the US government. They knew that life was about more than wealth. It was about love of family and doing what's right. That's the blurb for Cartel Wives. Cartel Wives is a love story, a married to the mob story, an insider's look into the terrifying but high-flying empire of the new world of drugs. And finally, the story of a major DEA and FBI operation. That's the blurb for the book Cartel Wives, written, written and published by uh, the wives of the Flores twins, two of the uh, main informants against El Chapo and uh, Sinaloa cartel uh, a few years back. Now amazingly, they wrote and published this book from their uh, witness protection exile slash hiding place. This is the marketing blurb for the book Cartel Wives, published by the wives of the infamous Flores twins of Chicago, who were two of the key turncoats in the conviction of El Chapo. While they were in hiding and their husbands were in the witness protection wing of some federal prison or perhaps in a halfway house like environment. Now when criminals write their own stories or have it packaged up by entertainment professionals, it becomes very sanitized. The blurb claims that their story is about love, family, and doing what's right. Not that the Flores families don't have love or family bonds, but it's definitely always about the money first and foremost in the world of serious gangsters. Never let anyone tell you otherwise. Now, last year when I was in Chicago, I actually had an hour long phone conversation with one of the Flores twins and especially his wife. Someone put me on the phone with them when I was in the shy. We talked mostly about their fairy tale romance, uh, how they were enjoying normal suburban life wherever they were at and how they wanted to make a positive change in their community. Now, all those things are probably true to some extent or another, but even after doing the right thing and that money quote doesn't buy happiness, turns out they were still spending dope money on lavish trips and material items. Though they did pay their kids private school tuition, and ironically, I guess they paid off their own federal student loan debt. Viviana Lopez and Valerie Gaitan, wives of former Chicago Kingpins Pedro and Margarito Flores used drug money for 2018 and 19 trips. A federal affidavit uh, said in their indictment back in June of last year. After the Chicago Kingpin twins were arrested in 08 for their dealings with El Chapo, their wives took lavish trips to the Caribbean and Europe that were paid for with bundles of suspected drug cash they got in the mail. Viviana and Valerie used drug money for the trips in 2018 and 2019 to fly, to example, for to Las Vegas for a Jennifer Lopez concert, to the Turks and Caicos, by Greece, Italy. This all came out in a warrant that the U.S. Postal Inspector had for a particular piece of mail. Priority mail package with a return address for the mother of one of the twins wives. And the two women are referred to as spouse one and spouse two in the affidavit. But like I said, in June of 2021, they were charged with stashing hundreds of thousands of dollars in money from back when their uh, husbands went to prison and receiving it in these packages in the mail over the years. Uh, but things were kind of fishy from the start, of course, when you make a deal with the feds. You have to tell them all the crimes you committed and you got to turn in all the stuff you're supposed to turn in. But one of the twins gave his wife a Bentley as a like a going away present right before he went to prison and I would imagine at the time this was going on the feds probably knew what was happening and they looked the other way because they can usually trust criminals to keep doing what they're doing long enough to hang themselves uh, people that have um, been engaging in risky behavior for themselves and others to get money I mean, if you don't stop them, they won't stop on their own. So while they needed the Flores twins to testify, they probably let them do whatever they wanted to do, thinking they were getting away with it, knowing they would drop the hammer later on, which they did on the two wives a few months back. Now let's go back and refresh our memory on the Flores twins and some of the things that went along 
with their wives' lives of luxury as detailed in their book. Pedro Margarito pled guilty to handling thousands of kilos per month for Sinaloa, Chicago and around the country. A little birdie in Chicago told me that uh, they paid people to track him down because he was part of one of the big uh, Chicago organizations that had a large retail operation on the street and they were trying to give him 100 kilos of heroin at a time on consignment, which is equivalent to like a thousand keys of cocaine and money. So they probably were making just as much on the H as on the white. And I don't think that was in their indictment. So massive money generators for the Sinaloa cartel. Without guys like them, there is no Sinaloa cartel. And you can go watch my interviews with Damien Cash, who uh, worked directly with the Flores twins. He's, you know, uh, and you can get a taste of what uh, daily life was like at that level of the food chain. When the indictment came down on them, they actually went to hide out in Mexico, actually living with El Chapo for a period of time and still directing traffic in Chicago and all across the country from south of the border. Once they made the decision to cooperate, they kept working with Sinaloa for a while to help the feds build an airtight case, but uh, as comes out in this indictment, like they would set some of their old customers up. They would call guys, hey, come get 50 kilos on consignment, just pay me for 10 of them now. Boom, the feds would hit them. But they were probably doing other deals on the size they didn't tell the feds about and kept the money and stashed it, and that's what's been being spent all along. It's a major no-no not to tell the feds about all your crimes and not turn over everything you're supposed to. They can and have pulled people out of witness protection and sent them back to prison after all. Uh, even some feds don't like quote-unquote snitches and uh, they probably love the opportunity to go back and punish people that they feel like kind of, uh, you know, got away with something in the first place. Like, I lo I'm sure they loved to slam Sammy the Bull when they gave him 18 years back in the day. The indictment provides more details on how the wives spent their money. In exchange for their cooperation with prosecutors, the Flores twins got relatively light sentences of 14 years in prison, while El Chapo, of course, got life. According to the uh, warrant for the mail that was put out in uh, October 2019, one of the Flores brothers' wives was spending up to 30000 in cash per trip. A man in a pickup truck would deliver the cash to a travel agency in Chicago that booked the trips. A witness told the authorities the cash was, quote, rolled up and smelled funny because of its proximity to drugs. It sounds like one of those things the police use to get warrants. I don't know why they always say money has traces of drugs or smells like drugs. I don't know, but either way... Uh, someone at this travel agency tipped the feds off or the feds probably followed one of the Flores relatives there, because I'm sure they were watching them, went in there, put the squeeze on the travel agency, then they had to make up a reason to get a warrant. So they said the money smelled like drugs. Either way, things started to unravel. On July 19th, 2018, customs officials encountered the wives after their plane landed at JFK Airport in New York, arriving from the Turks and Caicos. One of the wives had five cell phones with her, two of them had Chicago area code. The other was carrying a sheet of notebook paper that appeared to tally up tens of thousands of dollars coming from different sources. I mean, were they still doing stuff? Probably they were just getting old money sent to them. A separate search warrant was executed in September of 2019 after a drug sniffing dog alerted on a package addressed to one of the spouses. The package contained $5,000 in cash and $500 gift card with a receipt from a Walgreens store in the 4300 block of South Archer in Chicago. Security footage showed a relative of the wife had mailed that package and other packages. So that relative knew where the money was at, would get it and send it to them where they were at in witness protection. So they had money stashed in Chicago being sent to them in witness protection and the wives were going on lavish trips while their husbands were finishing up their prison terms. I don't know why they would have thought they weren't being watched, but of course, I guess you get used to that in that life. Like the biggest drug conspiracies usually go on, you know, under, when people are being surveilled, like the biggest drug deals are put together from prison. 
Take my documentary, Motown Mafia, that's set back in the early 70s. Uh, Eddie Jackson and Courtney Brown, they got hit with the largest heroin seizure in Michigan history at the time in the early 70s, 100 kilos or 90 kilos. They went back to New York to the Gambinos and got more, and they had really had their main run all the while they were on indictment and fighting their case all the way up to the Supreme Court. So the twins' wives were probably so used to being surveilled and this, that, and the third, they were just used to it, so they had somebody sending them money and they're flying around, but they had no visible means to where they're getting the money to go on $30,000 trips when they're supposed to have turned all their money in. Hubris is a word that comes to mind. Look it up. According to the postal records, uh, 82 packages went to one of the uh, wives' address and 55 went to the other address uh, between 2017 and 2019, presumably all full of cash. Like the rappers say, they were still spending old money. Let's go back to my phone conversation with one of the twins and his wife. I could say that it was truly bizarre, not because anything wild and crazy was talked about, but exactly the opposite reason. Nothing wild and crazy was talking about. Even though they'd lived a wild and crazy existence, um, you know, their conversation with me was about their own romance, what they were eating, how they enjoyed what they were doing in the community, and their first date, and uh, which is fine, but you know, they, uh, like a lot of high-level criminals or even drug addicts, definitely can see the cognitive dissonance at work. And the definition of cognitive dissonance is the state of having inconsistent thoughts, beliefs, or attitudes, especially as relating to behavioral decisions. So you think of yourself one way, we're just a suburban family with a, uh, uh, kids in school and we're in love. But in fact, you know, you're operating at the highest levels of the criminal underworld and using the money to go on lavish trips while being watched by the feds. And yet they're in this delusion of like, I don't know, they're regular business people and they're just going to go do what they want with no repercussions. The title of the two women's book is Cartel Wives, a true story of deadly decisions, steadfast love and bringing down El Chapo. Textbook Cognitive Dissonance. After all, if you helped El Chapo build up by selling his drugs, how is it that you bring him down? And as for the steadfast love, remember that the twins' father, amongst many other peoples, lost their lives as the son's decision to cooperate was revealed, and that the love of money over even family is the most steadfast love of all for high-level criminals or legal business people, in fact. I mean tales of uh, rich people abandoning the raising of their children to somebody else abound. In fact, you should always be dubious when even a small-time drug dealer or gang member tells you they made their illegal money for their family or their kids. People really love each other. They don't want to trade money for a father in prison or dead in the streets. Throwing the word family around paints a pretty picture of a disturbing Reality. Same is true for the drug addicts who roam the streets and can cry at the drop of a dime and tell you they want their kids back. No, bitch. You just want to get high. Our profit, American dope. Mm -hmm.